Welcome back to Wave of Docker. In today's video, we will be talking about the Orioles' upcoming four-game set with the Cleveland Guardians, taking place from Thursday, September 21st, over, over to Sunday, September 24th. The Orioles' probables are Grayson Rodriguez, Dean Kramer, John Means, and Kyle Gibson. And the Guardians' probables are probably Gavin Williams, and then Shane Bieber, Cal Contrell, and then probably Logan Allen. I'm saying probably because the Guardians have not posted their official pro uh, starting pitchers for Game 1 and 4, so I just made assumptions based off of their past rotations. But I'm hoping Gavin Williams Game 1, Logan Allen Game 4, but we will see. But uh, let's get started with the Orioles' uh, probables. Game 1 starter is Grayson Rodriguez, and Grayson absolutely shoved in his last start against Tampa Bay. Uh, he was the Game 3 starter in that huge game, Game 3 win, that uh, drew us back to a game ahead of Tampa Bay. He went eight scoreless and an eight nothing win uh, against Tampa, and he was just look. He looked marvelous. I really, I was really wishing that uh, Hyde gave him the ninth, but you know, he got the win, and he just looked phenomenal. That was definitely his best start of his career, and probably the biggest game of his career, and it was just awesome to see that. And he has just looked like a completely different pitcher since coming back from Norfolk, as I've said many times before. So it is just awesome to see him blossom into the pitcher that he is today. Uh, and this is his first career start against Cleveland, so let's see what he can do. The Game 2 starter is Dean Kramer, and just like Grayson, he looked really good in his last start against Tampa Bay in that Game 4 win. Uh, he went five innings of one-run ball, uh, eventually at one point retiring ten batters in a row. Uh, he just puts the Orioles in position to win. You know, it's not always the prettiest game, but he, you know, goes deep, and he just, he does his job. Big game crap. He just, he's always just looking phenomenal. And as you all know, I'm a huge Dean Kramer fan, so I love to see him succeed. And, you know, we, we need him big in game two. It's a pretty big series just for the purpose of just uh, gaining more ground on Tampa Bay. So we need him to perform. The Orioles have won 23 of his last 30 starts. So like I said, the Orioles just win when he's on the mound. He has struggled against Cleveland in the past. Uh, this is his third career start against them, and he is 0-2 with an ERA north of 5 across 9 innings. So hopefully he can uh, flip the script and uh, spin a gem uh, in game two. The game three starter is John Means, and he actually looked really good in his last start um, against the Houston Astros in game one of that series. He went five innings of one-run ball, and he's finally, you know, returning to form. Game one, our, his first start of the year, you know, he looked a little rough, but, you know, we saw that he still had his stuff, and he's got a little unlucky with a few bloop singles and <clears throat> a few meatballs that led to home runs. But in game two, you know, he's putting it all together, and he's looking really solid. This will be his fourth start against Cleveland, and he is 1-2 and two against them, with an ERA a little north over 4 across 10 innings. The Game 4 starter will be Kyle Gibson. Kyle also looked good uh, in his last start for the Orioles against uh, Houston in Game 2 of that series. He went 4-1-3rd, uh, allowing 3 earned runs. You know, he's doing what he did. You know, he didn't really get too deep into the game, but we did end up winning that game. Uh, it was a bit of a, a rough one, but, you know, we won. And, you know, I think since that Cleveland start, he's actually settled in a lot, uh, looking a lot more like he was towards the middle of the season, but... We need him to go deep in the game, uh, as we always need him to, and I think I think he'll do that. This is this is a Cleveland team that's not really playing for much. They have one of the worst offenses in the league, uh, so we really need him to you know go six or seven innings and limit the runs uh, from this offense. This will be his twenty third overall start against Cleveland in his career, uh, second this season, and he has struggled against them in the past. He is four and ten with a five fifty five ERA, so we need him to flip the script, <laughs> like I said with Dean, and spin a gem. Like I said earlier. The Guardians probables are Gavin Williams, Shane Bieber, Cal Contrell, and Logan Allen, with the game one and four starters just being my uh, predictions, but we'll see. So hopefully I'm not too wrong because I have notes for these guys, but let's get into some notes on Gavin Williams. Gavin Williams is a rookie, and this is only his 17th career start. In his last start, he went six innings of one run ball against the high-powered Texas Rangers. Through his rookie campaign, he is 3-5 and five with a 3-2-9 ERA, so he is just... I swear the Guardians have a pitching lab because they, they only seem to churn out really solid pitchers, especially rookies. So he's looked really good. Uh, obviously, you know, this Guardians team has struggled this year. So, you know, his record won't really dictate how well he's pitching, but he has been really solid this year. Like I said earlier, he is an above average pitcher. Uh, his numbers are uh, pretty solid in FIP, WHIP, and ERA+, plus, which is fielding independent pitching. Walks plus hits divided by innings pitch, such as how much, uh, how many base runners he allows per inning, and ERA plus, which is um, so basically, a hundred is a league average and his is above average. So that means that uh, it takes ERA like across the ball, like which ballpark he's pitching in, because certain ballparks like Coors Field is a hitter's ballpark compared to Yankee Stadium, which is generally a pitcher's ballpark, and it just averages that out to get um, a number. 
Uh, so since this is above average, you know, that means he's above league average. So, you know, he has been a really good pitcher, but hopefully the Orioles can uh, uh, give him a wake-up call and tee off of him in game one if he ends up being the pitcher. This will be Shane Bieber's sixth career start against Baltimore, and over those starts, he is 5-1 and one with a 3.09 ERA. Uh, and one of those starts includes a complete game shutout in 2019. Granted, 2019 Baltimore, uh, they were not very good, but this is this guy's a really good pitcher. He is the 2020 Cy Young Award winner. So he has pitched well against the Orioles in the past, but hopefully, I keep using this term, but hopefully we can flip the script and uh, tee off of him in game two. In his last start, he allowed four run runs across six and one-thirds innings uh, and a loss against Kansas City. I think we've actually just got swept by Kansas City, so um, it does not look good. The Guardians, uh, like I said, they're really not playing for anything right now. Uh, they're like 12, and I think they're all but eliminated from the postseason. Last I checked, they're 12 and a half games out of the wild card spot, so they're not really playing for much. And they don't really look like they're playing for much. So uh, most of these pitchers are in a bit of a rough patch. So hopefully we can continue that and tee off with them. This has been Shane Bieber's worst year since his rookie year. All of his numbers are down. He has a career high uh, ERA, FIP, WHIP. He just he just did not look like the pitcher that he looked like last year when he was you know a Cy Young candidate uh, as most uh, Guardians pitchers were. But this year we have hit Shane Bieber really well. Uh, in his last start in May, we hit we tagged him for seven runs. Let's continue that and get him out of the game early. In Cal Contral's last start, he allowed two run runs across five and two-thirds innings in a loss against Kansas City. Over 17 starts, Cal has an ERA of 5-2-6. So he's having another down year. He looked really great last year, but it seems to be <whistles> flip-flopping uh, like most Guardians pitchers this year, and they just have, have not looked uh, like they have in the past. This is his second start uh, against the Orioles this year. In his last start, he allowed eight earned runs uh, across four innings. So just like Bieber, we hit him really hard in May. And let's do the same thing all the way in September. Logan Allen is the wave of Docker prediction pitcher for game four. Uh, and he is another Guardians rookie. And he had, like, like all Guardians rookie pitchers and all pitchers in this system, seemingly, uh, he has looked abnormally solid. Over 24 starts, the former Orioles draft pick has a 3.81 ERA. So like I said earlier, he has just looked really solid in his rookie year. With a loss to Kansas City in his last start, he has allowed 15 earned runs over his last five games. So like most Guardians pitchers, he's in a bit of a rough patch. And like I keep saying, I need to find more cliches to say. But let's continue that and uh, tee off of him. I need, a, I need like a checklist, but tee off of him in game four. And we just need to get at least three, three out of four of these games for me to feel good. This is a team that isn't playing for anything besides maybe playing spoiler, uh, which is, you know, that's a route that some teams seem to seem to take when they're eliminated from postseason contention. But, you know, hopefully they take the route of just being like, you know what, let's just lose a few games, try to get a better draft pick. Uh, but we will see. At this point, the Orioles are, um, I believe, two and a half games up on Tampa. Tampa lost to Los Angeles yesterday as the Orioles lost to Houston. So uh, our lead stays pat at two and a half games. But we're down to the nitty gritty. I think we have, let me do the math here, 10 games left, which is just crazy. But Tampa has nine games left. So I saw um, a tweet, I think, from Orioles fans say on Twitter. Maybe fact check me on that. But uh, we need to play at least 500 ball uh, for us to clinch the division. And if we do that, the Rays have to go, I think, 8-1. and one. So 500 ball at least is the ideal uh, outcome over these next 10 games against Cleveland, Washington, and Boston uh, for us to clinch the division. <clears throat> and I think it's doable. We've got to lock in. Um, we're playing for everything right now. We're playing for everything, and the next three teams we play are playing for nothing. Washington, Boston, and Cleveland are all limited from the playoffs. So these are a huge series. We just need to take advantage of playing bad teams, win these games, and hopefully clinch our first division title since 2014. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed today's video a bit of a longer one i didn't i went more in depth in notes but we'll see i'm at 15 minutes right now in my recording but it'll probably cut down to around 10 ish i'm hoping but i uh, hope you guys enjoyed uh, today's preview uh go o's and i'll see you guys in the next one peace out